Hello, my name is Andy DeCourt. It's my privilege to serve as the pastor at Phoenix Christian Reformed Church. This midweek devotional is an extra connection at a time when our connections are some limited. This morning, I'm surrounded by the beauty of Prescott, Arizona. We got away for a quick couple days. It's much easier to see the beauty of God's creation out in the wilderness. It's even easier to appreciate God's power in creating all things. I thought about being like Jesus this morning, you know, getting up early to pray, getting away from the crowd, seeking his attention. Well, <laughs> I'll have to find some other way to be like Jesus today because the crowd seeking my attention woke up even earlier than me, my lovely children. But thankfully, we can spend time with God. We can be intentional about getting away in prayer or just finding a few moments to pray, even after breakfast. So that's good. I read a short book on prayer recently. He started with this quote, To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. It's a challenging quote. It reminds us that prayer and, and breathing in God's presence, it, it's as life-giving and as necessary as breathing is. It's also a challenging quote. It makes me feel pretty inadequate because I'm, I'm not constantly praying. It also reminded me of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks for everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray continually. It gives Christians the same challenge as the quote that I just read. Well, I learned those verses a long time ago. But it didn't make prayer as natural as breathing. Loving our father and mother on earth, that does come naturally for most of us. So why not prayer? Why, why doesn't it become as natural? Well, I can't say there's an easy answer, but it's interesting that the only recorded question of Jesus teaching, the only recorded question the apostles have for Jesus is, teach us to pray. Jesus, of course, as you'd expect, he obliges them. This, then, is how you should pray, Jesus begins in the Sermon on the Mount. Our Father in heaven, the same God who prepares our hearts to pray, inclines his heart to listen to us. The same God who created all of this and more, loves us and wants the best for us. God even calls us. To be his children, God has made a way to adopt us as his children. God, whatever else God does, first and foremost, he's calling us to embrace our relationship, to think of God as our father. We might even call father the New Testament name for God, beyond Yahweh or any of the other many, many names for God in the Bible. Let's pray together. God, we praise you for that you do help us to have joy always. Even when things aren't going good, even when things are going great, our joy is in you. We recognize our gifts and our, our love from you. We do pray often, maybe not continually. Maybe you could help us as we think about spending more time with you, just reminding us of how much, how much you love us, how much you want for us, how you do, in fact, want the best for us, for the gifts you've given us. We praise you for all that you've created, for all that you are, for all that you've given us. Help us also to use the gifts you've given us, to love your people, and to be in your presence. Help us even to give thanks for everything, to give thanks in all circumstances, knowing we belong to you, knowing that you always remain as our loving Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.